What's going on guys? So today we're back up in the shop as per usual. We've been screwing around a bunch with all the uh, body stuff and polishing and the tailgate working and just all that junk. And uh, we got the motor running a little bit. I ordered all those parts. They finally came in. The problem is, well, one of many of my problems, um, the torque converter to the ring gear situation. I gotta deal with that, unfortunately. So I'll probably be doing that at some point, tonight or tomorrow or whatever. So I figured uh, we gotta get this thing up in the air. We'll jack her up and I'll kind of show you the situation. It's gonna be a pain to film, I'm not gonna lie. We just gotta oblong some holes. Murr got me his Dremel tool uh, probably about a year ago. I never used it. It came with uh, you know, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff and I actually bought another set, a bigger set from Canadian Tire. What I'm hoping is I can get like a grinding stone or a, a little carbide bit or something, I don't know. I don't have a carbide bit for my little uh, air grinder, which I always get one tomorrow maybe. But I'm hoping I can just kind of oval out those holes and then put a washer on it is my plan. Uh, motor wise, so I did find a few things, actually we've had some nice weather and uh, I had a, a pile of snow out here which I thought was snow. Turns out it was a box full of car parts. Um, in that box was a couple of Tri-5 radiator hoses. So hopefully something will work. They might be for a straight six, but that might work out actually with where the placement is. We'll see. Um, I ended up getting a transmission cooler. So that's pretty slick. And this is what I was really waiting on. I'll smash this, too bad. Uh, this is an aluminum water pump. So it's higher flow, which I think we're gonna need all the help we can get on this rat motor, depending on what I do for a radiator. But it's also aluminum, so it looks cool. And this thing is the centerpiece of the whole hot rod, as you know. So, I don't know, we gotta figure something out. So I think it's gonna be a little bit of that. I'd like to get her all together, because if I get the water pump on, then, I mean, I should be able to hook the upper, uh, the radiator hoses up, or at least know if they're gonna fit or not. This I might just kinda strap in for the time being. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to hook up anything to the heater core because there isn't one just yet, so I can do that. I got to get one up in the air. I can hook up the uh, fuel line and run my line and all that sort of So a bunch of stuff all kind of has to happen at once. Then I can work on some carburetor linkage and a few other things. But it should be able to be kind of hot wired and run at least. Because uh, I'm hoping to get this thing kind of together enough. I'd like to work on something else for a bit. I'd like to work on that Dodge, Pel Plymouth, whatever, for, uh, for a little bit there. Um, so yeah, next time you see this thing, we'll have her up in the air, and I will show you my conundrum with this damn torque over to ring gear, and I'll probably get started on that. Ugh. Good times. Oh, hey guys. Fancy seeing you under here. So, here's my conundrum. As you guys all know, at the back of the ring gear, there's three. In this case, there's actually six, but they're all the same. Uh, bolt holes, and this is a 44 from... 70s I believe and this transmission is out of like a it's actually a truck transmission 700 r4 with a different tail shaft on it um, but all the electronic stuff's been deleted out of it so typically you would line up your torque converter bolt with the ring gear you kind of pull the torque converter head just a little bit I can't really do it one-handed and bolt it in but as you can see the other side will be better we're about a half a hole out. So, I'm going to try and push this torque bar all the way back in the transmission as much as I can. And, actually it might be easier to do it up here. But basically I'm going to take a die grinder, or maybe a drill or whatever, and just try and oblong it out a little bit. So I slot it out, so that the bolt will fit, bump the motor over, do it again, do it again, do it again. And then, uh, on the back side, I'll try to wash her in some Loctite and it'll be fine. This is standard practice to do, uh, I don't know if you do it this way, I think I do it the other way actually. On an LS motor, the uh, the ring gear is, is drilled like in this style, so slightly smaller. And then you slot it out, which I did on Danny's car and I forget what else. Now that being said, they do sell special ring gears and all that to make it all work. Uh, obviously I didn't buy that and obviously I didn't even know I had to do that on this one because I'm, well, 
a hack. So anyways, I'm going to get after that. I probably won't do a whole lot of filming because so it's going to be ugly. I'm going to see if I can just kind of like so get that oblonged oatmeal, bring it back after the first one. And if it's going to work, then I'll kind of carry on doing other things because uh, this is boring but crucial. Oh, I lost my hat. I also have back here. I got a yoke, so that's bonus. Uh, typically we do, well I do anyways, you slide this in so it's got about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so of, of the shaft sticking out to like this little machine piece. And then I'll measure, oh it might be a mark, uh, the center of the hole there to about the center of the, uh, what do you really call it, ears on the diff. You give that measurement and the, uh, and the yoke to the drive shaft guy, and he makes you a drive shaft. All you always give him a bunch of money. Also, this transmission cross member is just sitting here. It is actually not bolted down, as you can see. So I have to drill some holes through there and give that a little clamp down. But yeah. So, and yeah. Otherwise, everything else is done. Other end's got to follow that fuel line back and connect it into the fuel tank. And we're done under here. Well, I guess we'll see. So that's the plan. Like I said, kind of boring stuff, but uh, unforeseen. Learn from my mistakes. If you're doing like an overdrive transmission or LS to old style or whatever it is, double double check that. Do yourself a favor, double check that. We're going in. So, uh, I always hate filling under the car. I feel like it never does justice, but uh, the bolt is in. The hole has been oblonged. So we're good enough. Uh, this, these bolts actually have a little uh, shoulder on them. But, uh, you know, I'll probably just put, I'm sure I got locked out. I'll put a little washer on it, bolt it in now. The 454, which is what this is, they are a little unique. They are externally balanced, so they have a balanced ring gear and a different harmonic balancer than like, let's say a 396 or 402 or whatever they are. So they're a little bit unique. Um, and a lot of the 454s I've dealt with, the reason, I guess these have uh, six holes, and a lot of the stock converters I've taken out actually had six holes on them. I guess just for, because they're badass, I don't know. But, uh, we're only going to use three, because that's turbo 350s and, and all that stuff, and I guess obviously 700s. Only have three bolts, so we'll do that. Um, so you got to keep in mind, is you got to do every second hole, so I got to bump the motor around until you know we're somewhere in here it's easy to work with and i gotta do it two more times and that'll be gold and then i don't know i might start working on the the cooler lines i'm just gonna go off the transmission to the frame rail and then up and then maybe onto the the wheel tub i'm not really too sure but i'd like to get that taken care of and like i should the starter properly which i think i forgot to buy the shims because i'm an idiot but anyways then we're done kind of the underneath stuff which it sucks under here it's cold I'm unhappy, but uh, I'm going to keep giving her. All right, enough being under the car. Um, I got two bolts kind of in ready to go. The third one was grinding and the, just the carbide bit, wherever it is, it just it's wore out, so it's taking forever, so I'm going to get some new bits tomorrow. While I was under there, I hooked up my transmission lines. It gave them a rough, a rough bend, so my plan is that I'm just going to kind of run them along this kind of little ridge. I'll drill a couple of holes and put some grommets in this little splash pan here. I want to keep it off to the side as much as possible. Um, because again, I don't know what I'm going to do for a radiator. So if I just kind of, you know, punch a couple of holes, you know, right up there, or, you know, down there on the side, something like that, a couple of grommets, it'll come out. And then, well, I should open this ahead of time. One-handed stuff. But, well, that's what the thing will look like. So essentially, I'll mount that somewhere like... Like that, it's got two little uh, male ends. You just put some rubber hose on, and we'll just, I'll, uh, I cut one end off, and I'll flare it. It's got something to grab, do a little piece of rubber hose to the uh, the cooler off to the side, which will be attached to the radiator, and we'll be golden there. And honestly, I mean, for the time being, I can even just loop these if I don't want to mount this just yet, which I actually probably won't, now that I think about it, because uh, I'm going to be running this radiator, which is wrong. So if I do, it'll just be kind of off to the side of the cooler, or just loop those around. We're not building any heat in the transmission anyways. So that worked out pretty good. So we got one bolt to take care of. Um, the next thing up I want to put is this water pump on. So that way I can route my fuel lines, which would be pretty good. And once I get that on, I can decide what I want to do for hoses. I think I have a thermostat somewhere. 
and pulleys. Typically the long, the long water pump, which is what I have, is a three pulley like that. So I have one, that's for the crank. I don't think I have, this is like a single pulley thing. And I'll need this, possibly this. So this will be for the alternator. This beats bolts on to the water pump which then a, a bolt will go all the way through to the head which will give me my swivel and I gotta figure out some way to adjust which typically you would use this which would kind of bolt onto the intake manifold and stuff but I think with the tunnel ram that's not gonna be an option so I may have to modify this or make something or who knows what but that's uh, that's fun for hot rods especially ridiculous hot rods like this but overall we're getting there. So I got my list. Gentle. I need those bits. Shims for the starter. Probably have to watch this video to so remember what else. But yeah, we're making progress. So, water pump is pretty simple. Four bolts. I'll get it slammed on. I'll bring you back real quick and we'll see how this thing's turning out. I'm stoked. So we got this all dialed together, it actually fit together pretty slick. Um, so now I just gotta find a water pump pulley, which I think we might go for a little walk over to the shed and see what we got going on out there. It's cold and dark out. Uh, we got this all together. It's actually uh, got a provision for power steering if we ever go there. So all I do is I like, clean everything off, put a little silicone on the water pump, put it together. This I might be able to make work uh, if I kind of do a little bit of grinding. Um, this bolt right here, or this whatever slug, if that bolts on there, that gives you your adjustment. Unfortunately, up here doesn't work. So if I can bend this around, kind of heat up with a torch and slot it, I might be able to fit it onto this bolt hole right there. And uh, we'll be golden if that works out. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited about that. So we're gonna try that. I think I have a, a spare alternator. Whether or not it actually works is another thing. We can have it mounted and then, because again, you got to kind of make this snake around, which actually should work out pretty good. So if I can get that dialed together, and we're in pretty good shape. So pulley, alternator, and hopefully I have a long bolt there. You got to slide them through. I'll see what I can find, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we're in the shed of doom. Uh, this is where I just keep anything and everything. Uh, this is like a newer style water pump. It's an alternator I can make work. Uh, another alternator bracket, motor mounts. Some Dodge stuff. Hmm. I might be out of luck for a pulley. Uh, these boxes are all full of stuff as well. All right, I'm going to do a little look and hopefully I find something. Otherwise, I'm buying something tomorrow. All right, well, a lot, a lot of screwing around tonight. And unfortunately, that does slow down progress. And I've gotten to a point where I think I'm going to leave it. So I've made a list. I found some rad hoses. I think that one will work. I will need an upper hose, which will just be a straight shot. So I'll just kind of, I think they're like 14 inch or something like that. Uh, so I'll get something like that. I did put this alternator on. This is just a junky one I had. This is a needs a voltage regulator, so I don't want to use this one. I'll get like a single, uh, a single, single wire job, but it gives the idea it'll fit. I can run the fuel line around. It'll clear here, which is good, and it's higher than this bolt if I end up using it for this bracket. Oh, the other camera stopped. Um, so again, you can kind of see about how that'll work. 
Uh, I'll need some trimming and cutting to make it work. Otherwise, I'll just end up slicing down here and just using that little section, which is the adjuster, which is all you really need because between this bolt uh, and that bolt, it's all tight, it's clamped into place. I, this is not gonna work for a multitude of reasons, mostly because it's ugly, but it does kind of line up if I smash it into place. So that'll work out fine. All the pulleys will go around. I shouldn't have any real issues and life will be good. And then I just got a couple of, uh, I gotta block one of these off with pipe uh, pipe thread stuff and then these two a nipple going each and I'll just run a hose across for coolant hook up the fuel line figure out the transmission and I mean a few little odds and ends I do got to get like fine thread uh, bolts or, or what do you want to call them uh, I'm probably just gonna get bolts because I don't think I'm gonna run a fan the fan would be in the the, the shrouding or whatever you want to call it there the core support which I won't be doing uh, the radiator's gonna be on the outside and I could put a giant fan on the backside as a as a puller fan which I always a puller is better than a pusher because there's gonna be lots of room there I think it should work out pretty slick in my head anyways it's working out so I'm just gonna do a quick little inventory of everything I need just one more once over because tomorrow we should be able to button this thing up get the transmission dialed shim the starter properly put water in it have it actually circulate Oh, if I get a belt. The problem is you kind of need this all together before you measure up for a belt. I do have a bunch of miscellaneous ones. Maybe I'll luck out, probably not. But at the very least, there'll be water in the motor, in the radiator and stuff like that. So we'll have something. We can actually run it a little bit more, especially as a proper fuel source, such as the fuel tank, which is all brand new. Yeah, it's, uh, today was a lot of screwing around, but ultimately a pretty big wing. Uh, win. Whew, I'm losing it. It's getting late. But uh, that's really it for tonight. Tomorrow I'll come back full energy, and uh, a pile of new parts. All right, so next day, uh, we're gonna carry on. I got a bunch of parts. Merck came over and putting him to work. He's gonna hand sand all the, the pillars and whatnot. But in this box of goodies, overpriced junk I bought. I got a brand new alternator, just need that. I got a pulley, it's a water pump, but fortunately I only have chrome, so I'm gonna have to sand that down. I guessed it a belt. Hopefully that's, that's gonna work. Got a rad hose, got some shims, got some straps for the rear end. And I went to Canadian Tire and bought some more uh, grinding pieces to get the uh, ring gear dialed. So I'm gonna do that first. because so I don't wanna do it at all. And it's gonna be lame. So we're gonna get that together. Then I get the transmission bolted to the motor, 100% done. Then we'll start putting the front dress on. Fit the radiator, transmission lines, start working on some sort of a throttle system, which I think I have some ideas in my head. I bought some uh, half inch pipes, so I mean, that's basically all I need. And then Murr's gonna be here to tune it by ear and we'll be golden. Uh, I'm gonna level with you guys. I was under the car, screwing up that flywheel or ring gear and, and totally lost interest. It was ugly, it was a pain. I didn't wanna do it anymore. So I thought I'd do something fun, which meant putting on the front dress. So I put on this, uh, Unfortunately, I said that all I had was a chrome pulley, but I put that on there. We got everything on. I actually had to knock in the balancers a little bit, so I got that dialed. Everything's locked tight together. I ended up putting these brackets on. Um, so if you a real Chevy guy, I ended up putting this on, and then I just put a well, this big wrench on it and ring, bent it up, but then it fit. The belt that I guessed on worked mint, so that's all good. So this is just your typical uh, one-wire alternator with the two little... <clears throat> spades off to the side, 100 amp job. So now we have a water pump that spins. We have, I mean, a charging system if we actually run some wire to it. So we're all taken care of there. I'm gonna clean the rest of this junk out now because I don't really use it. We're not gonna use it anymore.
Well, we got the jerry can out and a bunch of spilled gas in the background. So that can only mean one thing. I tried to put gas in it. I spilled a bunch. So that's dialed. We got the front dress together. We got coolant in there. Well, as much coolant as I had. We got the fuel line all run. So that's good. Uh, what else have I done? I mean, all sorts of little odds and ends. We got a belt on the thing. The transmission is still hooked up. I did reroute the spark plug wires on that side. We got the battery uh, charging with the Muromatic Startatron ready to go. So I'm just going to clean all my junk out of here so nothing kind of falls right in the motor. And we're going to see if we can start it up and let it idle a little bit on its own. So that'll be sweet. And then I think that's where we leave it for a night. I just want to hear this thing run. I want to hear it crank over without the starter making a pile of noise because I'm not going to lie, I haven't edited the video where I first started it, but I'm sure you guys blew me up in the comments without how it sounded terrible. I didn't shim it right and all that. So I've shimmed the starter. Oh, I shimmed the starter. I think the only real issue I have now left is the damn ring gear to uh, torque converter, which I will work on. See if I can get some stuff tomorrow for that. And then, uh, yeah, I want to route the transmission line, stuff like that. But... We're actually picking up the front seat tomorrow. I had it reupholstered, so I'm stoked about that. I'm going to jam that in, so we're going to do a bit of an interior video next. This thing's really coming together. I mean, we're, uh, if I can actually make it run, we're, uh, we can hotwire it, and then we're uh, drive shafts and a shifter away from kind of driving out of, the, out of the garage, which is good. I'm not going to lie. I'm ready to work on the Dodge. All right, I'm going to get cleaned up, and I'll bring you guys back. All right, so the only thing all dialed together um so as you guys know or maybe not but uh i'm on a little whatsapp chat with a few other youtubers and stuff like that and they're all uh being a bunch of degenerates tonight and they're doing their shotgunning beers a little shotgun competition well as you guys know i don't really drink and uh, i figured i would show them uh you don't have to drink that fun so we'll see if we can fire this thing up I give a few reps for those guys, so you guys get to watch me uh, show up my loser buddies on the internet, and then we'll do one for us. All right, you hillbillies, check this out. two-handed operation. Hmm. We need more fuel. Anyways, so we've got some fuel leaks here. Which is a pain. This gasoline is flammable. Runs good. Sounds like that uh, accelerator pump's coming around. A little bit. Hear the starter? Or did you not hear the starter? All right, let's give it to these guys. All right, hillbillies. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Man, this one line just poor on fuel. Happy. 
Uh, well, after being uh, peer pressure to redline this thing from my hillbilly buddies, I, uh, well, you guys saw screwing around. You didn't see, uh, actually this, uh, the rear linkage was loose here, so it was only running on the front carburetor, which I don't think has much of an accelerator pump. It is dumping fuel, like dumping it. But uh, anyways, we'll give her one more of both carburetors for you guys, because you're the ones I really care about, right? You want to see yourself? Creepy. It's a pain to do this one-handed. You want to work the throttle. We'll get there. Look at this absolute dripping mess of chaos. Come on. Uh, gotta go with the hair bottle. You may have some tuning and reliability issues, but this is not a nice starter, just do its thing. Oh, it might be flooded. Work that starter. Well, it's like 11 o'clock. <clears throat> Ooh, I think the neighbors appreciate this. Oh man, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna leave it there for a night for this video. Oh, it's burning my eyes. This thing is, it sounds snappy. I'm not gonna lie, it needs, obviously needs a pile of tuning and I gotta fix those gas leaks and everything. But uh, <laughs> this thing's gonna be a ripper. I gotta get, like I said, tomorrow, transmission. I'm gonna work on the interior, measure drive shaft, get a bunch of that stuff dialed. And uh, I don't know, maybe in a couple weeks we'll be able to take this thing for a quick drive. The weather turned to shit. Look at this. Two days ago, there was no snow. Look, I'm straight back into a snowbank. Anyways, that's where I'm leaving it. Thanks for watching, guys. This thing, first time this thing's run, probably who knows how long. I got it from a guy that sat for 10 or 15 years, and he got it from a guy that sat. So this thing probably hasn't a motor in it, and 30 years went off the road since, I don't know, the 80s maybe? I don't know, there's no plate on it, no paperwork, no nothing when I got this thing, but clearly she was left for dead and now it's got a badass big block in it. I love it. Anyways, comment below, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, and uh, see you tomorrow. Interior stuff.